The topic for discussion is leukemia. Leukemia in Greek means leuko is white and he means blood. So leukemia is uh, synonymously called as white blood. It is actually defined as an abnormal proliferation of leukocytes which are immature, uh, marrow, immature marrow cells are seen in the peripheral blood. Cell, blood. Normally, it is a malignant neoplastic condition of hematopoietic cells of the marrow. Generally, they are associated with presence of large number of immature marrow cells in the peripheral blood. Leukemia is known to have association with specific gene mutations, uh, especially Philadelphia chromosome is seen usually in the cases of CML, uh, certain gene deletions or gene translocations. Usually, these malignant cells replace the normal uh, turn off, that is, the normal proliferating cells, uh, the marrow elements, this will also lead to anemia and thrombocytopenia. Because of this increased immature uh, leukocytes, what happens is the normal RBCs and the normal thrombocytes, that is the platelets, are depleted, hence resulting in anemia and thrombocytopenia respectively. There will also be deficiency in the actual functioning of these leukocytes because these leukocytes which have been produced, there is the abnormal proliferation of these leukocytes is of immature cells, hence their uh, actual functioning of the leukocytes will not be seen in case of leukemia. Etiology, it is known to have uh, various uh, etiological factors associated. Most commonly is genetic factors, usually seen in Down syndrome, that is trisomy 21, also in Klinefelter syndrome, uh, in case of Fanconi syndrome, Viscot-Algrid syndrome. What happens is there is a certain genetic predisposition, predisposition seen in these cases. Uh, in, in case of Down syndrome, people uh, when, when compared with the uh, normal population, Down syndrome cases have been uh, known to have more amount of uh, leukemia uh, prone, that is predisposition to leukemia is more commonly seen in these cases. Next, chromosomal abnormalities such as uh, Philadelphia chromosome seen, usually seen in about 95% of CML cases are uh, usually have this Philadelphia chromosome. Uh, earlier, it was actually thought to be a partial deletion of 21 chromosome, uh, that is the long arm of 21, chromosome number 21. But later, it has been actually uh, came to know that this Philadelphia chromosome is translocation of the genetic material from chromosome 21 to chromosome 9. Other factors such as radiation, uh, radiation like UV radiation, excessive exposure to this radiation, X radiation also can cause leukemia. Uh, there were many studies which actually showed that in medical profession, radiologists are 10 times more prone to leukemias when compared to normal other uh, uh, general physicians or other physicians of other specialities. Next, carcinogens such as uh, benzyl alkyl, uh, these type of uh, carcinogens and certain drugs are also known to cause leukemias. Uh, recently, leukemias have also been associated with viral oncology. Uh, certain viruses like Epstein-Barr virus and HTLV virus also been associated with leukemia. In polyoma virus is usually associated in case of animal studies. However, Epstein-Barr virus and uh, HTLV is more uh, commonly associated in case of uh, uh, human beings. Then coming to classification, based on its actual onset, uh, it is usually divided into acute, subacute or chronic leukemias. Acute cases is where the survival rate is less than six months period of time and chronic is when the survival time is more than one year of time, then it is called as chronic. Subacute is something which falls into the range between this acute and chronic condition that is between six months to one year. Whenever uh, this uh, leukemia conditions can be seen, this is called a subacute condition. And normally based on the types of the cells that are involved also, leukemia has been further classified. Normally myeloid leukemia, lymphoid leukemia and monocytic leukemia, these are three types of leukemias. Myeloid leukemia is where the myelogenous cells are being involved such as the granulocytes like basophils, acidophils and eosinophils. When there is uh, abnormal proliferation of these granulocytes then it is called as myeloid or myelogenous leukemia. And then lymphoid leukemia is where when we see the lymphocytes being involved and monocytic leukemia is also present where monocytes are being involved in these cases. So based on this acute, uh, based on the onset, the chronogenicity and acute uh, acuteness of the onset and also based on the types of the cells they are involved. There are actually are four different types of leukemias. First one is acute lymphocytic leukemia, acute myeloblastic leukemia, then chronic lympho myeloid leukemia and chronic myeloblastic leukemia. These are the four different uh, types of leukemias. So the lymphocytic leukemia as the name itself uh, indicates it involves T and B cell lineages and ALL and CLL are the types of these lymphocytic leukemias. When coming to myeloid lineage, they are AML and CML types. 
usually in acute uh, leukemias what happens is there is no uh, maturation of these cells is not beyond the myeloblastic or uh, beyond the blasted level there will not be any maturation in chronic what happens is uh, it, it uh, uh, the maturation uh, progresses beyond the blast and un until it reaches up to the site level that is monocyte or lymphocyte proliferation can be seen in case of acute what happens is it, the maturation phase usually stops at the blast level that is myeloblasts uh, can be seen and lymphoblasts can be seen in this acute conditions Coming to the common symptoms of leukemia, usually the symptoms are systemic in, uh, in nature. The, the manifestations are usually systemic. Most common symptoms are weight loss, patient will have anorexia, fever. Most common clinical symptom or clinical sign is lymphadenopathy. It is the first presenting sign in case of leukemias. Uh, in most of the cases, cervical lymphadenopathy is uh, usually seen. In some cases, what happens is cervical lymphadenopathy is earlier uh, before the onset of leukemia itself. That is, before the onset of the symptoms of leukemia itself is uh, we can we will be seeing this uh, uh, lymphadenopathy usually cervical lymphadenopathy and other cases other uh, symptoms that are involved is lungs will be involved where there will be shortness of breath and uh, weakness of muscles can be seen usually pain and tenderness of bones and joints also can be seen in these cases uh, skin shows skin symptoms include uh, uh, night sweats easy bleeding or bruising because of thrombocytopenia uh, as we already discussed because of abnormal proliferation of these uh, leuc leukocytes that is lymph uh, lymphocytes and white blood cells what happens is there will be in turn load on the bone marrow so that the RBCs and uh, thrombocytes will be decreased so the symptoms uh, associated with thrombocytopenia such as purpuras hematomas you know uh, bruising and all this can be seen purplish patches can be seen on the skin and symptoms of anemia such as shortness of breath paler uh, and uh, loss fatigue all these conditions associated with anemia can also be seen and in severe cases, in chronic cases, what happens is there will be enlargement of spleen and liver. That is nothing but splenomegaly and hepatomegaly. Usually in acute conditions, uh, the time, the duration of the for the symptoms to progress up to the liver or hepatomegaly, splenomegaly conditions, such so much of time will not be present in case of this acute leukemia. So most commonly hepatomegaly and splenomegaly conditions we will be seeing in chronic uh, leukemic conditions. Then coming to acute myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia is a condition usually seen in children and young adults uh, of, le of age group between 15 to 39 years. In this also males are more commonly involved than females and uh, what happens is because of this bone marrow infiltration patients will uh, uh, present with symptoms of anemia that is paler, lethargy, dyspnea, fatigue etc. And thrombocytopenia symptoms also where bleeding will be seen, spontaneous bruising, petechia, more bleeding tendency can be seen. And these patients are usually more prone to infections because uh, the actual lymphocytes or white WBC activity, the function of WBC is usually not present in these conditions because of the immature cells. So at this time what happens is there will be patients are usually more prone to infections. Then there will be fever with sweats, leukemia and infection where there is secondary to neutropenia. Patients also will uh, manifest with bone pain, organomegaly, like hepatomegaly, splenomegaly. They will also have adenopathy where the uh, glands are usually enlarged and skin infiltrations are seen in this condition where 10% of patients present with chloromas. Chloromas are nothing but they are a peculiar tumor which actually develops in skin and bones and especially they can be seen over the eyebrow. Why they are called chloromas? Because on fresh, fresh sectioning what happens is they, they, they present with a greenish color. Hence the name is chloromas. And in less frequently, in few conditions, meningeal involvement can also be seen. So coming to invest, investigations of this AML, normally complete black picture usually uh, shows anemia and which is normochromic type of, type of anemia. And WBCs are usually normal or raised uh, and thrombocytopenia can be seen. In case of uh, peripheral smear, what happens is there will be bizarre shapes, that is different shapes and abnormal granulation and there will be inability of platelets to aggregate or adhere. And then you also can find hyperleukocytosis, that is excessive uh, uh, WBC. The count can be more than 1 lakh in number. Uh, leukocytes can also be seen in this condition. In this picture, we can see a granular myoblast in the bone marrow sphere. Now coming to acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Usually it is more commonest malignancy in childhood, especially the leukemias. Uh, it, th this kind of leukemia is most commonly seen in children at the age group of 3 to 6 years of age. Bleeding, infections or fever are, are most common uh, presenting symptoms. Patient also will have fatigue and intolerance to anemia uh, and they also will have bone pain also in these conditions. Lymphadenopathy, usually the most common manifesting uh, sign. 
and you have splenomegaly, hepatomegaly in these conditions. CNS manifestations such as headache, diplopia, vomitings can also be seen. Uh, there can be intracranial hemorrhages and subarachnoid hemorrhages in these cases. Coming to investigations, again complete blood picture, it shows anemia. There will be moderate reticulocytosis uh, and thrombocytopenia is also seen in this condition because of bone marrow infiltration. And WPCs are usually normal to markedly elevated. There can be hyperleukocytosis in extreme conditions where it will be about more than 1 lakh in per uh, microliter. This can be seen in about 10 to 15 percent of patients. And in this condition what happens is there will be more number of lymphoblast. Then coming to chronic myeloid leukemia. Chronic myeloid leukemia is again an indolent course that is it is a progressive in nature. Usually all these chronic conditions what happens is there the symptoms usually uh, manifest in later st late stage. Uh, hematological neoplasm where there will be proliferation and accumulation of mature myeloid cells that is mature granulocytes are usually seen in these cases and their progenitors. CML is most commonly associated with Philadelphia chromosome as we discussed it is a translocation of genetic material from chromosome 21 to 9 and usually seen in more number in males and about the age group of 30 to 60 years chronic myeloid leukemia is commonly seen. Clinical features are, uh, associated with it includes malice, anemia, fatigue, weakness and they will have dizziness, irritability. Hepatosplenomegaly can also be seen in these cases because of uh, 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 less number of uh, uh, the functioning, less decreased function of leukocytes we can see in, uh, patients are more prone to infections and bleeding can also be seen. Joint pain, bone pain, amenorrhea are other presenting symptoms. Coming to investigations, a hallmark of this CML that is chronic myeloid leukemia is leukocytosis with immature myeloid cells. Usually blasts are seen in uh, greater than 5% blasts are usually seen in the peripheral smear. There will be increased neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils. And uh, bone marrow picture, it shows hypercellularity. There will be increased myeloid cells, decreased erythropoietic cells and uh, megakaryocytes are usually smaller in size when compared to normal platelets uh, in uh, these, these platelets are usually smaller in size. Now coming to chronic lymphocytic leukemia is also called a small lymphocytic lymphoma. In usually males are most commonly infected than females in this condition. It is characterized by proliferating and accumulation of morphological, morphologically appearing mature but they are biologically immature B cells. That means in this chronic lympho lymphocytic leukemia what happens is morphologically they appear as mature uh, lymphocytes but when we see biologically that is Functionally, they are usually immature B lymphocytes and this CLL is also in serious in onset. It is progressive slowly. It progresses slowly. Lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly can be seen in these cases and other uh, uh, common manifesting symptoms include fatigue, weakness and infection. Lymph nodes are symmetrically enlarged. This is one of the common feature and they usually non-tender and discrete. Enlargement of salivary glands and tonsils is also seen in this condition. It is because of infiltration of these leukocytes into this uh, salivary glands and tonsils. When salivary glands are involved, there will be decreased salivation. And other GIT symptoms, skin infiltration, uh, chloromas can be present and CNS manifestations, vision disturbances are other manifesting features of this CLN. And in this picture, we can see lymphocytes with darkly staining nuclei and, scan, and uh, scanned cytoplasm. These are CLL cells. Now coming to treatment for a, uh, acute lympho, lympho, lymphoblastic leukemia, we actually, uh, prednisone is a uh, first line of uh, treatment. Vincristine, asparaginase, donorobicin, intrathecal methotrexate can also be given. In case of AML, anthracycline, citarabine and monoclonal antibodies can be given. In CLL, you can, there is, it is actually a regimen where the combination of drugs are, are being given and chloramicil, furan analogs, interferon can also be given in this uh, CLL conditions. In CML, imatinib, mesylate and hydroxycarbamide are uh, drugs of choice. Now coming to oral manifestations, usually ALL condition in children, they have more amount of oral manifestations. However, other types of leukemias also present with these oral manifestations. Uh, gingival hyperplasia and gingival hemorrhage are usually seen. Gingivitis is another condition. Normally, there will be ulceration of mucosa also. This kind of gingival hyperplasia in leukemia is usually boggy. It is the gingiva appears erythematous or reddish in color and easily friable. It usually bleeds on simple provocation or probing. Oral ulcerations are usually seen in these cases. Uh, these ulcers are usually discrete punched out ulcers are seen. They are more prone to secondary infections. Uh, because of this gingivitis, bleeding uh, and gingival hemorrhage. This gingival hemorrhage has a characteristic feature where bleeding from the sulcus is usually seen. 
Perinatal ligament necrosis is usually seen in these cases and further this necrosis progresses to underlying tissue. Because of this perinatal ligament necrosis what happens is teeth usually becomes loosened and there will be rapid loosening of teeth and destruction of underlying alveolar bone is also another common manifestation. So when we are coming to dental considerations that as a dentist when a patient with leukemia comes to us usually check for a complete plate picture where anemia, uh, anemic symptoms and also platelet count has to be taken into consideration. Whenever there is plate, uh, we, we can actually go for any elective dental procedure only when the platelet count is greater than 50,000. If it is further less than that and an elective dental procedure is needed, then platelet transfusion is required in this condition. Rubber band extraction is one uh, feature, I mean one of the one process where we can actually use in the case of leukemias. And uh, in any severe cases, consent from the physician is very important. Also maintain oral hygiene uh, in these cases because they are usually more prone to secondary infections and uh, other common oral infections. By taking proper conditions and care, elective dental procedures in these cases with proper consent from the physician can be performed. Thank you.